If you're on the receiving end, there's a couple things. If you're on, if you're one of the people who has someone has come to and they have a problem, they're they have confidence in you. If someone comes to you and says, I have a problem, I need help, they have enough confidence in you and they've stepped out on faith and trust in you to help them with their problem, you need to make sure that you are trustworthy and that you act in a way that is right and just. All too often, it is so easy for us to have someone place confidence in us and trust in us, and we betray that trust. Look at what Jesus says, Matthew chapter 7. Judge not that you be not judged. If someone comes to you and they have a habit or a problem in their lives that they're trying to fix, it, the last thing they need is for us to stand in judgment of them. Because they already know that it's a problem. Judge not that you be not judged. For with the judgment, now this is talking about condemnation, this is talking about passing out a sentence, with the judgment you pronounce, you will be judged. Oh, I would never become addicted to coffee. Naturally not. I don't even like the smell. Okay, I can tolerate the smell, but I don't like the taste. I'm not going to become addicted to that. On the other hand, give me an Earl Grey tea. Mm -hmm. Ah, guess what? Tea contains caffeine too. Oh, so I can look down my nose at someone who might have a problem, not really realizing that I essentially have the same problem, just in a different form. Jesus says the measure you use will be measured to you. Why do you see the speck that is in your brother's eye and do not notice the log that is in your own eye? How can you say to your brother, let me take the speck out of your eye when there is a log in your own eye? You hypocrite. First take the log out of your own eye, then you will see clearly to take the speck out of your brother's eye. And again, look at Galatians chapter 6. Galatians chapter 6. And in verse 2, the Apostle Paul says, let's begin in verse 1. Brothers, if anyone is caught in a transgression, you who are spiritual should restore him in a spirit of gentleness. Keep watch on yourself, lest you too be tempted. Bear one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. If anyone thinks he is something when he is nothing, he deceives himself. But, uh, but let each one of you test his own work. Self-examination here. And then his reason to boast will be in his self alone and not in his neighbor. Habits. I thought I'd throw this in in today's lesson because... Oh, we've talked about the lizard. We've talked about habits. Habits fall into one or more of five categories. Sometimes our habits are physical. Okay. I joked with you about coming in and sitting in the same spot in the church boat. That's a physical habit. Some of our habits are mental. Our brains tend to function in patterns. And our brain function eventually creates a pattern that becomes a habit in our minds. Some of our habits are emotional. Sometimes we avoid certain circumstances because of the emotions involved. Some of our habits are re relational. 
Some habits we form with how we deal with others. Some habits are spiritual. We create both good and bad habits of all of these. Good habits might be physical exercise, mental clarity, emotional support, good relationships with those around us, and good church habits. On the other hand, we can also create bad habits in all of these areas. Habits are not normally broken instantly. I want you to think about that. The, the lizard did not grow to four feet long in a year. Lizards are, have a very long lifespan. Most lizards live about 20 years. Monitor lizards, that is, anyway. 20-year lifespan. Habits are not formed overnight. My mother used to say, son, it takes 21 days to form a habit. That's when she was trying to get me to do something good, like brush my teeth or get up on time. She said, if you get up every morning at 5 o'clock, you will form a habit in 21 days. I never managed to get up at 5 o'clock on, on a regular basis for 21 days in a row, so I never formed a habit. But habits are not broken instantly either. They are broken the same way they are formed, a little at a time. Habits tend to grow. Habits shrink a little at a time as well. The power of habits. Habits like lizards start small and innocent enough, and they grow into something much larger. Bad habits are a result of a lack of self-control. Usually bad habits are formed because it's something we desire. Satan uses the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life to form bad habits. And it is a result of a lack of self-control. Bad habits will grow until they control our lives, just like a lizard. Once it reaches a certain point, it becomes out of control. Control us. Now, breaking the dragon. Turn with me, if you will, in your Bibles to Philippians. Philippians chapter 4. Get in my New Testament instead of my Old Testament would help. In Philippians chapter 4 and verse 13, the Apostle Paul writes, I can do all things through him who strengthens me. Very obvious. We can do, no matter what our habit is. You know drugs are a habit. Alcohol. We could go on with the list. Those are habits that control us. And when a habit controls us, sometimes we feel powerless against the addiction or habit. Paul says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Cut off the food supply. Stop buying the rats. Did you know that a monitor lizard can go, particularly the ones that are uh, grown as pets, can go for up to six months without eating and be a perfectly healthy lizard. Six months, no food. Habits can do that too. Habits can go, we can think we've got the food supply cut off, we're gaining ground, and bam, it's back in our lives as strong as it ever was. But cut off the food supply, stop feeding the addiction. All the zoo. If outside help is needed, whether it's a family member, church member, counselor, seek the assistance necessary to deal with the problem. This is exactly what the mistaken lady did with the lizard. Clean the space. Okay, 
Life does not exist in a vacuum. It's important that once a habit is out of our lives or an addiction is out of our lives, we need to clean up the space, get rid of the remaining odor, the disorder, and fill that space. Fill that space. Life does not exist in a vacuum. Certain aspects of counseling, you'll learn that habits are something we do when we're not thinking about them. In order to get rid of a bad habit, we need to create a new habit, a new structure. Something that they tell us when dealing with people with, who have um, the addiction of smoking. In order to quit smoking, you have to fill that void. Smoking is something that is done without thinking about it, conscious thought. Start chewing gum is one of the, one of the things they say. Start chewing gum. It's a nervous habit. Fill life. Jesus tells a parable to demonstrate this point in Matthew chapter 12. The Gospel of Matthew chapter 12, Jesus talks about a person who has an unclean spirit or a demon in his life. Now, I don't think that that unclean spirit or demon was in the shape of a monitor lizard, but maybe it was. Matthew chapter 12, verse 43. I want you to see what, what is said here. Matthew 12, and in verse 43. When the unclean spirit had gone out of the person, it passes through waterless places. Some of your Bibles will say desert places. Seeking rest, but finds none. Then it says, I will return to the house from whence I came. And when it comes, it finds the house empty, swept, and put in order. Okay, this is a person who has gotten rid of their habits. They've cleaned the house. The devil is gone. They've swept it. They've put in order. They're back in church. They are faithful. No longer under control of this demon. Then it goes. This is what the demon goes. After, after it has traveled the world through the dry places, it returns. Then it says, I will return to my house from which I came. And when it comes, it finds the house empty, swept, and put in order. Notice what happens. Then it goes and brings with it seven other spirits, more evil than itself, and they enter and dwell there, and the last state of that person is worse than the first. So it will be with this evil generation. So that's how it works. If we don't put our house in order and fill it, if our lives, if there is a void in our lives, Satan will work his way back in. Fill the void. Paul in Ephesians chapter 4, right where our Sunday morning Bible study uh, is in Ephesians chapter 4, uh, only we didn't quite make it down to the 21st verse. Ephesians 4, 21 says, Assuming that you have heard about him and were taught in him as the truth is in Jesus. To put off your old self, which belongs to your former manner of life, and is corrupt through deceitful desires. Well, that sounds like bad habits to me. And to be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and to put on the new self, created after the likeness of God, in true righteousness and holiness. See, life doesn't exist without something there. Take away the old habits out of your life. Replace them with godlike habits. 
and you will fill your life. And when Satan comes back to call, he won't just find a house swept and put in order. He'll find a house swept, put in order, and working for Jesus. And there will be no room in that house for Satan. If you're here this morning, you're not a child of God, I would encourage you to consider the steps. But you know the most challenging step doesn't appear on the screen. The most challenging step comes from Revelation chapter 2 and verse 10. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. That's what we've been talking about this morning, is being faithful unto death. We know we're human, we sin, we fall short of God's glory. Let's set our house in order today. Removing bad habits and replacing them with good. Then take your song, we'll sing the song.